Welcome to the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast, presented by the Beef Cattle Research Council. The most popular content from beefresearch.ca, available on the go. Before we get into this week's episode, a quick message from the BCRC. Understanding the principles of low-stress weaning allows beef producers to wean calves in a way that works best for their operation, while enjoying the benefits of reduced disease incidence, lower costs and time spent on treatments, better weight gains, and a quieter barn. There are two common approaches to low-stress weaning. One is called fence line weaning, which involves splitting cows from calves on weaning day but allows fence line contact between the two groups while preventing nursing. The other system is called two-stage weaning, which involves a non-surgical procedure of inserting a clipping or plastic nose flap inside the nostrils of calves, which prevents them from nursing. Learn more about low-stress weaning strategies at beefresearch.ca. This episode is titled, Beat Costs and Boost Yields, with Bale Grazing. Many Canadian producers have taken steps to extend their grazing period and provide forage for cattle outside of confinement and away from corrals. Well-planned, extensive wintering systems have obvious benefits for reducing on-farm labor and yardage costs, but extended grazing also has environmental advantages for nutrient management and potential forage yield improvements. Different methods of extended winter grazing may include annual forages for swath grazing, corn grazing, grazing, and grazing crop residue from cereals. Perennial forages can also be stockpiled for later grazing. Bale grazing is another method of extensive wintering that is proving popular with farmers. Cattle graze bales on pastures and hayfields, typically through controlled access by electric fence. Bales can be purchased or grown on farm and placed strategically in cells or bale pods. In some cases, cattle feed on bales directly where they are dropped from the baler, but in most situations, bales are placed on pre-selected sites that need additional fertility or are located adjacent to stock water or natural or man-made shelter. Producers typically set bales on their round sides, 35 to 40 feet apart, and remove twine or net wrap prior to allowing cattle access to the area. Some farmers try to source bales that are wrapped in sisal twine, which breaks down over time, making follow-up twine management easy. When producers place bales, they are importing nutrients onto a site, not just from the forage itself, but also from the urine and manure of grazing cattle. This reduces manure handling and hauling costs and also allows farmers to target areas in need of soil improvements. Any residual forage left ungrazed after cattle have moved to the next area isn't a waste, but rather a source of nutrients for subsequent forage crops, litter to help increase water holding capacity and water infiltration of soil, and a forage species seed bank. The number of days producers chose to allow their cattle access to a pot of bales will depend on how many bales are placed, quality of feed, body condition score of the cattle, weather, and the farmer's personal goals and management style. Some producers will move cattle every two to five days, while other producers will allow cattle access for 20 or 30 days of feed at a time, or even longer. It's important to feed test and weigh bales placed in grazing areas to ensure cattle have a relatively level plane of nutrition and avoid a rumen roller coaster caused by too much or too little feed. Producers may also use hay, green feed, or even straw with supplementation. However, feed testing is the key to ensuring a balanced ration is achieved and potential toxicity issues are avoided. Bale grazing can improve perennial pastures and even be used to reduce brush encroachment. However, it's not suited for all sites. Avoid placing bales on environmentally sensitive sites such as wetlands or creeks. Do not bale graze on native rangeland to prevent introduction of invasive or weedy species that can upset the balance of natural biodiversity or reduce the overall ecological integrity of a site. Monitor snow conditions closely. Snow should not be used as the sole water source for lactating cows, freshly weaned calves, or cattle with a body condition score of 2.5 or lower. A dwindling snowpack can cause animal stock water demands to spike, even when the other water is available. Excess snow can cause cattle to expend extra energy to access feed, something that should be avoided for cattle groups that require higher levels of management such as calves, young cows, or thin cattle. 
It's always important to have a backup plan with any extensive wintering system, and bale grazing is no different. A prolonged, harsh winter can increase the need for additional shelter and a better quality forage for supplementation for animals in any condition. Producers must manage and closely monitor cattle to ensure that they stay healthy, remain in good body condition, and have access to forage that is of adequate quality, as well as access to water and shelter. Producers are finding forage management success and cost savings by trying new methods of extensive wintering. While like any beef cattle production practice, bale grazing requires planning and management. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. You can find all relevant links and information at beefresearch.ca or in the show notes. The Beef Cattle Research Council is funded by the Canadian Beef Cattle Checkoff and strives for excellence in the production of Canadian beef, cattle, and forage through research, innovation, and extension. Tune in every Tuesday as the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast delivers straightforward insights, expert information, and a wealth of practical knowledge for Canadian beef producers. Subscribe now.